All righty, boys and girls, we are back at the hill test, and we got a vehicle that we is very capable with uh, plenty of protection, and uh, we're not going to ruin this one. Brian, uh, what do we got today? What do you mean about ruining? Oh, never mind. We've got the 2023 Chevy Silverado 1500 Bison Edition from AEV. That's what this is not a Rhino, it's not a Buffalo, it's a Bison. And what does the Bison give you, Craig? A bunch of protection. So we'll start with the ZR2 bits. You get a 6.2 liter V8 or the 3 liter Duramax, baby Duramax. This one has a 6.2. The diesel is available later this year. It's not available yet for testing, but it is coming compared to a 10 speed auto, blah, blah, blah. The important bits for ZR2 is the not only a rear locker that's selectable, not the G80, you also get a front locker. And that's not something that any other mega off-road truck gives you in this segment. Raptors, TRX is great. Those are fast in Baja. This is trail ready, and that's the whole point of this. It's not wider than the regular Silverado, and that front diff lock and added protection matters. If they make a trail boss, this would be the what? Trail Hefe? Trail... <laughs> no, the trail boss is more like trail manager. Okay. This, is, this is more like trail director, Ooh. I think. Maybe okay. trail owner. Oh, it's probably oh, yeah. closer to yeah, that. Okay. With the Bison Trail Owner Zero Two is Trail Director, okay, or VP. Gotcha. Okay. That's what it is. Anyways, the Bison bits are the metal. That's right. These are not plastic. These are boron steel. They're hot stamp steel, and they are incredibly durable. We debated on the way over here if you hit a deer, and it was low enough did, to not get the grill. Would you even know you hit it? Mm, I don't the know deer if you would. would. The deer would, yeah, but I don't know if it would. Um, a bit more, but that, that's real. So what you do get are these D ring mounts. You can put in a, uh, a bow shackle here. And it's actually big enough, you can probably get some of your soft shackles to there, but not most of them, it's kind of a smaller hole. Underneath you get added protection for the front sump, the steering, all this down here, the front diff, the transmission, the transfer case. Also, the rear differential pumpkin itself has a skid plate. So that tells you that this thing is intended to go over rocks, which is what the others just don't do. So I wanna read you some specs though, Craig, because approach and departure angle is really what we test on this hill. That's what this step is all about. If you've seen this segment before, you know what we're talking about. I'm gonna read you the stats on this, ready? Here's the AAV Bison specific things. The approach angle is improved from what was 31.8 to 32.5. It's pretty good. It's already pretty good. Let's be honest. That is an improvement. But man, that original one's pretty good too. I'm really happy with that. That's something the AT4X does not give you, or did not give you at least the last one we tested, did not have that kind of approach angle. This is really, really good on that. Um, departure angle, let's go check out the rear bumper for that. Oh, one more thing I want to point out. You get a step in the front. Not quite sure why you would need a step in the front, but if you know or have opinions, comment below. Why do you think you need a step in the front of a truck? I'm curious. Can't be because you have to work on a Chevy engine. No, 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 no. No, to get, well, I don't know. What do you think? Let us know. All right, coming down here, you also get rock rails. And this is a bit controversial. These are not frame mounted, they are body mounted. But AAV is not known for doing things half <laughs> or uh, not all the way. I've got a feeling these are perfectly sturdy for rock use. They are actually really strong. I've stepped on them, they don't flex at all. They're really, really durable. So that's something to know. Let's check out the rear bumper. All right, coming out back. The most important thing you get in any offer package is a bedside flag. Without that sticker, these skid plates don't mean a damn thing. Do so, you even have the package without that? Do you even have it? Can't, if you can't tell anyone, do you even have it? Right, okay. Rear bumper, this thing is just like the front, except you lose the step that the regular Silverado has to get in the bed. Hmm. But you maintain your radar sensors and that kind of stuff, and you get a little bison on the back here. That guy's cute. He's, um, I shouldn't say cute about a truck. I think he's ready to take on terrain. That's what that means. Same. Well, they did a good job, though. Like that, you shouldn't, a lot of things you back into it and damage that, that's protected pretty well. It you is, yeah. Well, and it. also, it's well integrated, right? So if you went and tried to make this truck on your own on from a catalog, from four-wheel parts, it's not going to be this cohesive. This whole thing feels just cohesive and buttoned down. Um, those skid plates that we talked about a minute ago, those aren't nothing. They are three millimeters thick and five press hardened. I don't know what that means, but that sounds really durable. Like they're not messing around with this. Now rear departure angle, I gotta pull stats again on that because I can't remember all the numbers. The rear departure angle was 23.3. Any guess what the new one is? 23.4. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> kind of silly, but they are bragging on that. Another thing you get is the dual exhaust. These turndowns look like an old Mopar to me. I think that's really cool. I do wish it was a little bit louder, but none of that matters. What powers this whole thing? 6.2 liters of America. Let's get to it. We'll be fast because our battery's down low. Here's the reality. This is a pushrod V8. It lacks personality, but is robust with torque everywhere. And I love that you can get a truck today that isn't full of turbos or hybrid components or things that can heat soak. This is just reliable. It never stops giving you things. You never feel it pulling timing while you're using it. I love that. Really, really like it. 460 horsepower, sorry, 420 horsepower, 460 torque. 
and that torque is up there with EcoBoost. That's really impressive. Now, interior. All right, Brian's getting the truck started and he's gonna talk about all the goodies we have to get us up and over the hill because modern trucks, we get a lot of goodies. Brian, what are some of those goodies we get to play with? Okay, look, so we've got drive modes on this one and they're actually really simple. You can turn your knob left or right and it is, there's terrain. You gotta be in four high for that. There is off-road and there is normal. Off-road adjusts your throttle mapping and your transmission shift points. Terrain gives you one pedal drive, which that's kind of a neat thing you can use going over obstacles. Also, you get more important than anything else is you get a full traction off function. You can press and hold that. I wish more cars had that. Hill descent, which crossovers have now, that doesn't really matter. Rear locker, which you can't get in a normal Silverado. That's really frustrating. I wish you could, but this one gives you the ability to just select it and lock it. That's nice. But on top of that, you can lock the front, which none of its competitors can do. And right, Brian, so what is our plan uh, initially approaching the heart, the main line? We're going to do the main line in this bad boy. Yeah. We've got approaches. We've got protection. Look, even if it scrapes, I'm not going to worry about it. Yeah. It's going to be fine. So we're going to start with two-wheel drive. We're going to do two high. And anything else? I'm going to turn traction control off because I don't want it to have any help. No help at all. At all. And I'm going to press and hold to keep it off. If we can't get it up with that, because we have a 33-inch Goodyear uh, Terrain MT on here, or Territory MT, let's see what it does. If it doesn't bite, we'll then try the rear diff lock. Oh, you don't want to do traction control first? I guess we could see. Let's just try, let's see how it goes. Okay. And then right. after that, we'll work our way up to four high and then front locker if we need it, which I don't think we're going to need for this. Right. And see. we're going to go slow. We could momentum it probably for sure in tool drive, but. Well, well, let's reiterate this. The whole point of this is to show what its tools can do, not what right. we can bounce up. Yeah, we can, but now, you could bounce this thing up because it's got the protection. We're probably going to do it at the end of this video. So if you want to see that, jump to the end, but we're going to show its tools first. All right, it's time to tackle the, the main line. And again, that main line is pretty tough. Um, I don't think we'll need the bypass or the hybrid. So uh, let's see what happens here. We got plenty of approach angle. We got plenty of protection. We got good tires. Let's see what happens. You're losing traction, but we're already actually getting some good grip with the tires. Maybe we'll modulate the throttle well. Let's see if we can. This is where we run into trouble. An approach, you start getting a little bit of a step. Oh, we get, get to it. Okay, we have gotten to the obstacle. Okay, we have gotten to the obstacle. And I want to show people here how much clearance we have. We have plenty of clearance, actually. A lot of times we're in trouble right here, but we've got room to spare. And we've got the protection, so. Ron, do you want to stay in two-wheel drive and see what happens? Yeah, I'm pretty impressed. Let's do traction on. Okay. And see if it makes any difference at all. Okay. Nope. Okay, so hang on, let me come in there without falling. Good luck. All right, got it. So Brian, what, <laughs> the problem we've got here is... Uh, it's just a grip It's situation. a grip issue. Also now, let me ask you this. We do have the option of a locker now, don't we? Do we, we do. Can we do a locker in two-wheel drive? Yes, we can. In, in four, I'm sorry, in two high, you can do a locker. I'm going to back up a little bit. Okay. And try to do, again, I target two miles an hour on these, on these obstacles. On every vehicle, it'll vary a little bit, but that's the goal. Okay. And let's see if that makes any difference. I've got a feeling we're going to need the front drive to just lift the nose. Yeah, I think so, too. If we hit it with some speed, it'll bounce up, but that's not what we're testing at this moment. Yeah, we're, so. not, we're not trying to momentum. We just want right. to slowly get up it. So as soon as the locker does. Okay. Um, All right, so like you said, we're going to try the locker. We'll back up a little bit so we can reapproach, not be stuck in the same rut. Um, but he's not going to momentum it. So the rear's locked. You can already see the rear locker helping a lot. We're both spinning the same speed now. That's got them to the obstacle. So we're just going to run out of grip. Okay. All right. Okay. So, as expected, Ryan, I'll get down here again without falling. All right. So, kind of as expected, it's just too much of an obstacle to push yeah. over without more momentum. Right. So what are we going to do now? Show the people uh, what modes you got. And what so gonna I think what we could try, actually I don't think it'll make a difference at all. Honestly, four auto is the next minimal option we good can point. do um, with the diff unlocked. G okay, good point. And so what that does is we have the front wheels helping, but we don't have a, even a center it, diff lock at that point. It's not locked. It's, it's being feathered um, based on traction need. But it might be enough. 
Two things I want to point out on the heads up display, I've got the inclinometer, which is really cool. Very good. And it was alerting me low traction when tires were spinning. Okay. And also, when wheel speed got over 25, it unlocked the rear diff. I felt it go boom, boom. Ah, okay. So, we got to be mindful of that if you're using this on trails. That's gotcha. for crawling purposes. Okay, yeah. So, which makes sense because that's what they're designed for. So, yeah, we'll back up a little bit again here. We'll put it in four auto, which again is four high without the center diff locked, is really what we've got going on. So, let's see what that does. Still going slow, but we got four auto now. Which, which just means the front's gonna help as need be. We're at the, at the, there we are. You can already see the front helping a lot, but they're spinning. Not, no lock, put it, transfer to the ground. Got it. And you got plenty of protection here, but I don't think it's even gonna rub. Okay, get a little bit of a, Man, they got it. All right, Brian, so... Uh, so that's all it takes, really. Pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, you got the tires, you got the protection, which we hit a little bit in the back. I don't know if it was maybe the fuel or... I think it was the, the exhaust tip, is what it sounded like. No, it was before that. Oh, was it? Okay. So, but, you know, like but we had the protection, we barely even touched it. Yeah. These suckers are thick. We could have bashed it and it would have been fine. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Two things. sometimes wanna... you just need the front wheels to help. That, just to roll it up the obstacle so, is all it is. It's a lot of gear ratio to crawl, crawl up, so we could have used four low, which would have been way easier. Would have been easier. But we're just trying to show what it can do with the minimal amount of assist. Correct. But I'm impressed at how grippy these tires are. They don't look that aggressive, They're but they pretty good. grip really good. Um, Brian, I do want to point out, we had another GM product up here recently, yep. and that was the Sierra AT4X. Correct. Um, didn't have near the approach, but it did make it up and over. But, well, we had a problem well, when we were trying to get up and over. The issue was its approach angle was so bad, we yep. had to do the hybrid line. And in order to get it up there, we needed the front diff locker to help. We needed four mm -hmm. low in the diff lock, mm -hmm. and it completely spazzed out. Yeah. It threw a transmission code. Yeah. Go check that video out if you want to. It's the Hill Test with AT4X. But my point is, none of those issues here. No problem. At, at all. all. Yeah. Now, I'm interested about the one pedal drive. Yes. Should we try that coming down the hill? Let's try it. All right. So that's train mode. Okay. So to get in train mode, you have to do what now? You had to go to four low and lock the front and rear diff. Wow. So we tried it in four high. It said train mode not available. That's just us not being aware of what you needed to use for it, but just be mindful. You can't use it everywhere. So train mode, even though train implies everywhere, you can't use it everywhere. You gotta be in all the right modes, kinda like Toyota does sometimes. Okay, kinda all right. Annoying. So. So right now it is one pedal drive. When I let off, it's applying no brake. Is it working? No. Okay. It did on level ground. Well, train mode's, I guess, not downhill assist though. Oh, now it's working. Okay. Now it's working. So I'm not touching... The brake pedal. Oh, but now it's going on its own, too. Okay. See, so now it's holding. Okay. But I think it's just downhill hold. I give a little bit of gas. It's dragging the brake. It's just not coming to... It's, there's a rock rail working. Yep. It's just not coming to a stop. Okay, so train mode's interesting. It is working. Okay. So let's talk about this. So train mode does work, but it's not one pedal drive in the sense that when you let off, it comes to a stop. It works like an EV where it drags. Mm. But with the weight of the truck coming down an obstacle like that, just you, you still got to ride brake. It, it's not, you can't crawl now, at like It one. does have downhill assist, which could have come into play there. Potentially, it felt like downhill assist, but less aggressive. Mm. That's what okay. it felt like. But this does have downhill assist. What it I'm does saying. have that as yeah, well, okay. yeah. You so what if you, you probably could have used downhill assist with terrain. Probably. Yeah. And like, let's be real, the most fun thing to do is bounce with these things. Let's try one more drive and see if we can do it. Uh, yeah, that's what we're really here for. Let's yeah, get let's it up with two wheel drive. Let's do it. Show them the camera system. Camera system's good. Um, but when I went to drive from reverse, I, you had to toggle it yourself. It wouldn't do it on its own. But you do have lots of camera angles. Look mm -hmm. at that. It is good quality. It is great quality. You've also got your wheels. And you've got your rear wheels. Whoop, do it again. Oh no, it's just a, no, that's your rear wheels. Okay. That's your front and rear wheels. That's really cool. Yeah. All right, let's bounce this thing up. Let's bounce it. All right, so now we're gonna try the hard line. We don't even need the bypass line or the hybrid line for anything. We're gonna do two wheel drive in the hard line. There's not very many trucks we've gotten up that. We think this one can make it, but we need the momentum, but this truck's got the protection to do it. So we're gonna do it. And as expected, uh, we kind of knew that would happen. Um, this is where protection comes to play, approach angles come to play. 
Ronnie, you got enough momentum, you can get over anything in this sucker. And right? look, look, every time you comment and say, my Camry can do that, yes, it can, but its bumper would be behind it on the bottom of the hill. That, yeah, this can That's do it multiple it. times. Yeah. And this goes to show, with enough travel, and we so far, a 33-inch tire is the shortest we've done this with, it can do it. So how many vehicles have made it up in, quote-unquote, one-wheel drive, two-wheel drive? Uh, the F-150 trimmer. Yep. Any Raptor, all the Raptor pickups, full sizes, or the 150s. We haven't driven the Ranger yet. Right. And this. Oh, and the Bronco Raptor. Bronco Raptor. Bronco Raptor. So, so Raptors and this. So this is the fourth vehicle ever to make it up in that mode. Yeah. Pretty impressive. Um, that's, it, that's a win. Because even the AT4X wouldn't do this. Good point. Yeah, because they didn't have the approach. Yeah, the approach. All right. Thanks all right. for watching. That's it for the hill test. Um, we test them all. Our mode, non our modes, one wheel drive, two wheel drive, four wheel drive. We try it all. Thanks yeah. for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. That's how we make these videos. If you don't do that, we can't keep making them. So just do that. Thanks for watching. It's free.